Hello everyone and welcome to today's session on what a typed array in JavaScript at IntelliPath. Do you know friends that JavaScript is a versatile and dynamic programming language which is widely used for web development. While it's primarily known for its simplicity and flexibility, JavaScript also offers advanced features for handling binary data efficiently. And one of these features is typed array, which provides an efficient way to work with binary data in a more controlled and performant manner. Now before we move on and discuss more about what are typed array in JavaScript, I request you guys that do not forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon. So guys, we are going to start our session with an introduction to what are typed array. Moving ahead, we will discuss about why to use typed array. Then we will learn about types of typed array. Moving ahead, we are going to have a thorough discussion of creating a typed array. And at the end, we are going to conclude our session with working with typed array. So guys, let's start with what are typed array in JavaScript. So guys, JavaScript arrays are one of the most fundamental data structures used to solve different problems. The majority of different programming languages provide the array functionality to hold similar kinds of data elements successively. The web programming language, JavaScript, also allows using array inside it. JavaScript also supports other interesting feature called typed array. The typed array are like normal arrays, but it provides the functionality to read and write raw binary data into memory buffers. Now the question comes up, why do we need the typed array? So guys, like any other programming languages, JavaScript supports array objects, which can store values and objects inside them. These arrays are dynamic, so they can grow and shrink whenever needed. For web programming, JavaScript optimizes the source code and the engine performs array access much faster. But in the normal array, it can store any kind of data. But in web technology, the data variations are much more versatile. Sometimes they can be images, video audio, and some other object types. But sometimes we may need to access the raw binary data directly from the memory. In that aspect, the type array come into the picture. Each element in a JavaScript typed array is a raw binary data. There is a variety of different supported data formats from 8 bits integers to 64 bit floating point numbers and many more. Now, if I talk about the typed array in JavaScript, they have sub components also, which enable the total flexibility of using typed array features. It mainly has two different components. The first one is buffer and the second one is views. Buffers can be implemented using the array buffer object in the JavaScript. And this object represents the chunk of data. And to read, write and manipulate the data, we need to use a view. The view is like a window. From different size views, like a different size window, we can see different size of byte components from the array buffer. This view provides a context where the data type, starting offset, index management, and the number of elements can be utilized. Thus the entire array-like object can be formed. So you can see this, there are two different concepts. The first one is array buffer and the second one is view. We will see more of buffer and views in the hands-on section. But for now, we got an idea that why we should use the typed array. Now let's move to the next part that is typed array methods. So guys, here are a few of the methods which I have mentioned. The first one is copy within method. The copy within method copies a portion of an array to an another location in the same array and returns the size without any modification. Next comes is the entries method. JavaScript entries method returns a new array iterator object that contains key value pairs for each index in the array. Then comes every. In this method, it tests whether all the elements of the array satisfy a given condition or not. Next comes the fill method. The JavaScript fill method is basically used to fill all the elements of an array from a starting index to an end index with a very static value. Next comes is the filter method. This method forms a new array that falls under a given criteria from an existing array. Let's see some more of the methods. Next comes is the find method. The JavaScript find method is used to get the value of the first element in the array that satisfies the provided condition. Then comes the find index. In this, it provides the index of the element that completes the given test in the array. Next comes the for each method. In the for each method, it calls the provided function once for each element of the array. Next method is the includes. 
The JavaScript array includes the method is inbuilt function in JavaScript, which is basically used to determine whether a particular element is present in the array or not. Now, the next method is index of. The JavaScript index of method is used to find the index of the element provided as the argument to the function. And next comes is the join method. The JavaScript join method is used to join all the elements of an array into the string. Now let us see some of the demonstration on the VS code so that we could get a brief idea regarding the typed array methods. So guys, there are two types of objects that work together in the typed array API. The first one are called the buffers. It is basically an instances of an array buffer that holds the binary data. And the second comes the views, which provides the method for accessing the binary data. So there are two types of views. The first one is an instance of a typed array constructor, such as unit 8 array, float 64 array, etc., which works same as a normal array, but only allows a single type for its element. The next come an instance of a data view, which allows us to access the data at a specified location at any byte offset in the buffer and interprets that data as one of several types, such as uint8, float64, and etc. Basically, Typed arrays are like array-like objects that provide a technique for reading, writing the raw binary data in the memory buffers. But when we deep dive into the typed array, we have to get into the array buffers. So let me give you a brief description about array buffers in JavaScript. An array buffer is an object representing a piece of fixed length of binary data. It offers no technique for accessing its contents. It's just an array of bytes. Array buffer is the actual storage for the bytes which is used for binary data transfers between server and the client. To work on the binary data or start with array buffer is the core root of the object of everything. It's just an array of byte. It's got a fixed length which cannot be modified. It doesn't take extra space, rather it takes exactly that much space in the memory. The content of an array buffer cannot be directly modified and can only be accessed through a data view object or one of the typed array object. A single array buffer can have more than one data view or typed array objects attached to it and any changes to one object can be easily seen by the other objects view. The following are the typed array, like for example, float32 array, float64 array, int8 array, int16 array, int32 array, uint8 array, uint8 clamped array, uint16 array, and uint32 array. To access or read the content of the array buffer and to perform any operations like write or iterate on the array buffer, we need to use a view. Okay, reading and writing values into the array buffer can be done using the data view. To access the array buffer data, two kinds of views are used. First is the typed array, such as uint8 array, int16 array, and float32 array, which explains that the array buffer has an index sequence of an elements of a single type. These are the mappings whether the bits should be viewed as an array of 8-bit signed integers and 16-bit signed integers which are already discussed here. The view object is nothing but the mirror reflection that represents the bytes stored in the array buffer. Create an array buffer by passing its number of bytes into it. In order to create a data view, we need to provide its constructor with the array buffer. Typed array constructors can optionally create array buffers for us. Now let's move on and let's deep dive into some of the example of JavaScript array buffer creation. So guys, I have created an index.html file all over here. So here is an HTML tag. Inside this is an head tag. Then inside this is an title tag where I mentioned JavaScript array buffer creation. Then in the body comes the script. And in this script, I have created our buffer with var buffer equals to new array buffer and of size 16. And I have printed console.log, the length of the array buffer is, and I have called this buffer.byte length, which is going to give us the length of our array buffer. Let's try to run this program and see what happens. So as you can see guys, in the output, it shows the length of the array buffer is 16. Now let us try one more example. So guys, in the next example, what I've used is array buffer is view method. 
This method will check whether the given argument passed or the values for a method is an instance of a typed array or of a data view. And it will return true if the given argument is a typed array and a view of array buffer, otherwise false. Okay guys, so let us see. So in this index.html file, you can see inside our head, I have given our title that this program will be all about JavaScript working of array buffer dot is view function. Then in the script, I have declared our array buffer with var buffer equals to new array buffer of size 12. Then I have used the method is view and given name as is view one, which is equals to array buffer dot is view. And I have given the new int array 32. Then in the console log, I have printed is view one is a typed array and I have called is view one. Next one is the creation of the array buffer having the size in bytes. Then var buffer one I have created, which is equals to new array buffer with size 10. Then I've declared a variable called DV, which is equals to new data view. And inside the parenthesis, I have put the buffer one. Next is I have used is view two, which is equals to array buffer dot is view. And I've called this variable DV all over here, which it will check and see and I hope so, the answer will be true. Next, I've created a view three in which array buffer dot is view, then view four, I've called array buffer dot is view. Then I have declared is view five, which is equals to array buffer dot is view. And inside this, a close parenthesis. Then inside the next one, I've called null. View seven, I have put undefined. And in view eight, I have put as new array buffer et. In the view nine, I have put new uint 16 array and the next one float 64 array. So guys, as I have told you earlier, this method will check whether the given argument passed for a method is an instance of a typed array or of a data view. And the same I have printed. Now let's run our program and see the output. So guys, you can see the output. It shows that is view one is a typed array. It shows true. Okay. View 2 is also a typed array. View 3 shows it's false. It's not a type array. So it goes till 8, which is not a type array. View 9 and view 10 are the type array. So is view method checks whether the given instance is of a typed array or not. So guys, this was our second example. Let's see our final example. So guys, in the next example, we're going to see the use of slice method. So what we're going to do, we are going to create a new typed array that has only the elements of the original typed array and whose indices are between starting and end, which we are going to exclude. If the start is undefined, then the slice begins from index zero. And if the end is omitted, the slice will extract till the end of the sequence, but it will not be included. And it will include only end minus one. The slice method doesn't modify, it just returns the shallow copy of an item of an original typed array. Let's see an example all over here. So inside our head tag, I've given this title as JavaScript typed array dot slice method. So inside this script, I have declared const u int eight, which is equals to new int eight array. And I have given the number as 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80. Then I have sliced u int eight slice one to four. It will start from index one and it will go till three. Next is of array two where I have sliced till three. Next is eight, where I have sliced till two. Now I'm finally printing the slice array of item index from one to four, then from index three, then from index two. And I have printed all those array. Let's see what portion of these array we are gonna get it. So I'm gonna run the program and let's see the output. So guys, you can see the output all over here. The first one shows that the slice array item from index one to four, it shows 20, 30, and 40 with a buffer size of three. Okay. And byte length is three, byte offset is equal to zero and length is three. The next example, we see the slice array of an item from index three till the end. So it returns 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80. Okay. Finally, for the last one, it slices the array item from index two till end. So it includes 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 with buffer size of six, byte length of six, byte offset is zero and the length is six. That was all for today's session guys. I hope so. You would have enjoyed our today's video on 
what are typed arrays in JavaScript. Just a quick info guys, IntelliPath offers full stack web developer course in collaboration with ENICT Academy IIT Guwahati. Through this course, you can learn everything from front-end web development to back-end web development from esteemed IIT Guwahati faculties and industry experts. With this course, we have already helped thousands of professionals in successful career transition. You can check out their testimonials on our Achievers channel whose link is given in the description below. Without a doubt, this course can set your career to new heights. So visit the course page link given below in the description and take a first step towards career growth in the field of web development.